And just like that, we are on day nine of training camp observations. The Detroit Lions had their last practice in front of fans uh, for the next, what, nine days. In nine days, they come back. They have two more public practices and one more loyal Lions season ticket holder practice today was that day for season ticket holders. They'll be back in front of the home crowd on the 11th. The 12th is for season ticket holders. And then the 14th is the last day of training camp. So believe it or not, there are only, unbelievably, man, there are only three more days of Lions training camp, the 11th, the 12th, and the 14th. But our guys are heading off to New York to play the New York Giants. And as we already know, Dan Campbell will play no starters during the preseason. I completely expected that. If you guys remember, I talked about that in a previous video, that he's kind of becoming like that Sean McVay where uh, we went from seeing them for a series in year two to not seeing them at all in year three, and we have one of the best offenses in the National Football League. So I'm not tripping on that as well. I can't wait to see. I'm actually, this is the most excited I'm going to be for the preseason because our team is the best depth wise that has been in years so we're going to see a lot of people fight for just a few remaining spots and a lot of guys could be cut that two years ago would have had no problem making the team so a couple things today that I saw is that I, I I'm a little bit surprised by this the inconsistency of this young man here that we got to talk about Tim Twentyman what he had to say about kicker Jake Bates says Bates progress progress the Lions conducted a scrimmage like practice Friday for their last session before heading to New York to join practices for joint practices and the team's first preseason game with the Giants next week kicker Jake Bates got a lot of work on Friday and it was pretty inconsistent I had him eight for 14 on field goal tries and five for six on extra points after a couple rough days this week it wouldn't surprise me if there is a competition brought in at that spot sooner rather than later. That's disappointing. That's disappointing. I mean, this guy went, he only missed. I mean, now, granted, this is practice. This is practice. What will it look like in the end game situation? So the preseason is going to tell us a lot. One of the things we talked about with Jake Bates was pressure and how it would be in front of a legitimate crowd of people. But of course, this is practice and in my opinion, this is like shaking off the cogwebs. Now, you might be like, well, he um, he just left the, the UFL. Why is he struggling? That's a good question. I don't know. Different holder, different timing. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But the Lions are probably going to bring in some competition. Now, Riley Patterson was waived by the Jacksonville Jaguars and was picked up by the Washington Commanders, so he never made it off the waiver wire. He never even got to us. Turner, the uh, UDFA that we picked up and then released, as far as I'm concerned, he is still available. And I think that John Parker Romo, or just John Romo, is also available as well. So the Lions could bring in some guys. Patterson is off the table, but maybe we can bring in some guys to compete with. My, uh, I'm sorry, Jake Bates. I wouldn't be surprised. I think we're going to, whoever competes, it'll be like this. Whoever wins the job, the other person goes on the practice squad. I still don't believe Jake spends any time on the practice squad. With a leg like that, you cannot, I think teams are going to snatch him, even if it's for a project project purposes. So hopefully he can kind of get his feet underneath them, pun intended, and be able to kind of buckle down, buckle down on these kicks, man, because we need him big time. We can't be in a situation where we're looking for another kicker or we don't trust our kicker. That is the worst. We've been in that situation for the past three years, and I don't want to be in anymore. So Bates, got to pick it up, man. We are counting on you to be that guy. I spoke very highly of you, did a lot of lobbying for you. I'm sure you can handle it. You got the leg. Let's get that accuracy, man. You'll be all right. So I got faith that uh, Jake Bates will be fine. Now, yesterday I had a lot to say about Hendon Hooker and his inconsistency. You talk about inconsistency. Hendon Hooker is the epitome of inconsistent. He'll throw a beautiful ball one play and an interception the next. How did he do today? Here's what Tim had to say. Says the good and the bad. It's been up and down. It's been an up and down camp for second-year quarterback Hendon Hooker as he battles veteran Nate Sutfield for the backup job behind Jared Goff. There was a two-play sequence Friday that showed both the good and the bad with Hooker. Says a drive for the second team offense ended with Khalil Dorsey, a Khalil Dorsey interception 
on an out route throw, Hendon tossed behind the receiver and into Dorsey's hands. He did the exact thing yesterday, threw it right to him. It's a throw Hooker's thrown a number of interceptions on dating back to the spring. But on his very next throw, Hooker lofted a perfect 19-yard touchdown to running back Sione Vacky. Good. He's back over trailing linebacker Jalen Reeves-Maven. It's just about Hooker limiting the bad throws moving forward because the good ones are really good. And I agree. Yesterday, threw like the dumbest pass. And then the next, the very next one, man, just like a beautiful spiral, spiral loft put it in perfect placement so he has potential it is essentially his rookie year this time last year he was he was in street clothes right he was in training camp clothes couldn't even practice had no practice so Hendon Hooker is he capable of being backup number two right now I don't know I don't know and I don't know if the preseason is going to be enough to catapult him into that trajectory but I also know I don't want Nate Sutfeld in that position either so the Lions might have to look outside the team, man. It might be coming down to that where we can get to um, have a backup quarterback. But what about the defensive line? How's Hutch been doing? Tim continues, a real problem. Says the duel of Aiden Hutchinson and Aleem McNeil was a real problem during Friday's scrimmage. Hutchinson had multiple pressures and sacks on a couple of really good plays against the run. Uh, McNeil also had a sack and was really hard to move off the ball. He stuffed a couple runs too. Those two are poised to have monster years. And that's very fitting between for these guys because Aiden is essentially trying to get an extension next year. And I predict him to have more sacks than he had last year at his rate. He had nine and a half, 11 and a half. I wouldn't say 15 is too much to, to ask for. I think Hutch is capable, capable of at least 15. And when it comes to Aleem, he's in a contract year. Brad Holmes talked about extending his contract, but he's already, he knows what, what he's playing for. And he was going to play like that anyway. But Aleem McNeil is, I expect both those guys to have uh, big, big years as well. So let's talk about this last, this last point here. It says backed up. One period in the scrimmage put the offense at their own one yard line. And the goal was to get two first downs to win the drill. Goff and the first team offense needed just three plays to get their two first downs on, on two Montgomery runs leading to a first down and a St. Brown grab for their second first down. Rake Straw's interception came in this period off Hooker to win the period for the second team's defense. Sudfield and the third team's offense got their two first downs on catches from Jefferson and wide receiver Trey Quan Smith. And that pretty much wraps up the day. Speaking of White receiver. Dan Campbell said something in his press conference today that we may or may not talk about later. But what I got from it is that outside of wide receiver number three, we don't know who it's going to be. We don't know who it's going to be. So something to keep an eye on during preseason. Training camp is leading up to preseason. The preseason is here. The Lions. Now, we'll probably hear some stuff coming out of, uh, you know, Florida, New York, with when it comes to training camp. Some of the beat reporters will be there and things like that. Unfortunately, I won't get to see it with my own eyes, which kind of sucks because I've been having such a great time. But we'll keep an eye on the progress coming out of camp, and then we'll also be talking about that game that is going to be happen, happening on Thursday. Man, I just, I mean, before you know it, it'll be Monday, and then it'll be game time. Like, this is absolutely crazy. Speaking of game time, make sure you guys check the link in the description the affiliate link man to get you a pretty good deal using the game time um application so you guys can get tickets as the season roll is rolling around man it feels good to be back i am so excited about this team this season how is the defense going to play out who's going to get wide receiver four i mean will we carry six when it comes down to cut day what are we going to have to go through? I think this year is going to be very interesting. A lot of stuff to keep your eye on. Remember, this channel is made possible by viewers, subscribers, and members just like you. I am at the making of this video, 11 subscribers away from 21.3. I mean, we are cruising right along. My goal is by the end of this month to hit 22,000. That would be phenomenal. We're also going to be having a giveaway very soon. The 21,000 subscriber giveaway is going to be happening sometime between now and and 
the first preseason game. So keep an eye on videos. Make sure you got that notification bell rung. I need some people to answer this for me. I heard if you are in Canada or maybe out of the country, you cannot see my community tab. So let me know if that happens with you. I'll probably put that information out in a the giveaway information out in a little small video or something like that, and we can go from there. But you guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions. Football is back. Oh, how did you like the new kickoff rule? It's pretty good.